as the Kenyan people continue to suffer under a regime that does not care, what has happened over the last day or so is that Ruto has issued threats to Azimio and its leadership. And Azimio has responded by saying they will not be intimidated under any circumstances. And as this is unfolding, there are some Kenyans who are now preparing to bury their loved ones. Okay? Who are casualties of police brutality. Not mandamanos. Let us get that very straight. It is always key that Kikiumana you try and step back. You try and run away from your emotions. And you analyze the cold facts. It really helps. Because emotion clouds judgment. Emotion will not allow you to see some things clearly. And the very clear evidence that many of the victims are not victims of Mandamano is the following. Somebody was going to collect their child from school. And as they were walking, they suddenly felt one of their legs becoming very heavy. Yeah, it took a little time for them to realize walikuwa mekula risasi kwa yungu. And that was the lucky Kenyan. Yeah, because they are now in hospital. Recovery. A boxer was returning from training. Yeah, a champion boxer in the nation called Kenya. And on Jogo Road, last Wednesday, I mean this guy was returning from the gym. He was going home. Maybe to have a meal after the rigorous training session. On Jogo Road, Akakula Risasi Kwakichwa. He had nothing to do with Mandamanos. A young entrepreneur, someone in Nandora, barely 26 years old, was locking the door to his business premises. Akakula Risasi Ya Polisi. Nakakufa Hapo Hapo. And I can go on and on and on. Now what you are seeing in news reports in the media is an English phrase that really upsets me when I see it next to these stories. Stray bullet. Stray police bullet. Stray means the bullet was headed somewhere else. And then by accident got this unfortunate Kenyans. Okay? Now me and you, based on what we already know, information that is on the public domain, we know that that is not true. And we know that this is not the correct use of the English language to describe what happened here. But hey, when politics, Ruto is telling us that all these problems are being caused by Mandamano. If Mandamano can stop, these problems will stop. And Ruto is going even further to warn that Mandamano must stop in Kenya. Now, one can be excused for asking the simple question. Has Ruto read the Constitution? And if he has, does he care? Because he took an oath of office and this oath he swore to protect the constitution. And we all heard with our ears, although many of us missed that swearing in, to be honest. Indeed, I believe a majority of us missed it. Yeah, for reasons we know very well. Yeah. But is on record as swearing to protect the constitution. Indeed, it is true that power corrupts. We are told that a long time ago. And we are also told absolute power corrupts absolutely. Okay? 
Now I was just wondering if you can catch up with these guys from our past and ask them a simple question. What happens when a leader who is already corrupt gets power? Yeah, can they rephrase that for us and tell us what happens? Although we are seeing it in Kenya today. We are suffering under it in Kenya today. That is really what it is. Now Mwangiria, the former Muranga governor, I didn't know this man is spiritual. But he brought up a spiritual point in Machakos. When those male leaders were visiting victims of 12th July Mandamanos, police brutality. And former Governor Mwangiwa Iria was telling us about a man called Rigadi Gashakwa and his past in the 90s. And he was telling us, Damu ya watu inamsumbua. Okay? What did he mean? Now in the book of Genesis, a man called Cain murdered his brother called Abel. And we read that Almighty God said later that the blood of Abel was crying out to him from the ground, from the soil, yeah, where it had been poured and where his body had been secretly buried. That's in the book of Genesis. In the Bible. You know I'm forever a student. And recently I learned something I didn't know about blood. It is alive. Okay. We won't go into the details of exactly what that means. But in a nutshell. When you pour blood. Any blood. It is a very, very serious thing okay and it will haunt you and it will haunt your precious children and their children and their children's children forever when it says unto the third and fourth generation what do you think it means do you think it means it will end in the fourth generation no because the fourth generation will still have that problem that curse of somebody who once poured human blood for whatever reason. And Mwango Eria was telling us that these things that happened in the 1990s involving Rigadi Gashagwa, that was what was disturbing him. Yeah. And making him mentally unstable. So that he was making the utterances he was making. That's what Mwango Eria was telling us. Now, you can talk and say many things. But the next thing somebody will ask you is show me the evidence. Okay? So let me do that. In the same 90s, we had a very powerful cabinet minister called Nicholas Kipiator Biwot. He was very feared by Kenyans. I mean he could get away with anything. Kwani utamwambia nini? Kwani utampeleka wapi? The same behavior we're seeing from you dear today. But do you know how Nicholas Biwot ended up? Do you have any idea? In his last days, Biwot was a shadow of himself. He became a skeleton. A very thin man. He was ailing. He was forever ailing. One day my young nephew met him on the lift. And he came back to tell his dad that the man he met on the lift, whom he understood was a man called Biwot, was mentally unstable. Yeah, this was the assessment of the young man. Typical symptoms yeah, of pouring innocent blood somewhere. In the past, those are very typical symptoms, yeah, expected symptoms. And in the end, be what today is six feet under. And it doesn't matter if he's buried in a coffin worth 100 million US dollars. 
doesn't matter. Folks, hii mwili ni chakula ya mchwa. Itawachwa hapa hapa duniani. It will go back to the soil. Even if that body was being carried in a very expensive car. Even if that body was wearing a watch worth 1.5 million. Okay? In a country where people are going hungry. All those things are irrelevant. They don't matter. My very strong advice to those who want to understand very clearly what is happening in the motherland right now is to go back to the 1990s and study carefully what was happening then. Because in the 1990s, we had people who came up to protect the Daniel Toretich Arab Moy presidency. And how did they do this? <laughs> well, go back to the 90s and study. Because that is exactly what is happening in the year 2023. There are people, individuals, who are out there and their main objective, the only objective, is to protect the William Ruto presidency. Okay? And it doesn't matter what is happening to the rest of Kenyans. That is really what it is. And when you understand that, then you totally understand the current political situation in Kenya. Now it really warms my heart this morning that Kenyans in the diaspora have stood up to be counted. And in their letter to the Kenyan government, they have stated very clearly, they have laid out very clearly the real situation in our country today. And there's more. They have threatened action yeah, against the government. They have threatened their own resistance against this government. If their demands, which are the demands for ordinary Kenyans, every ordinary Kenyan within the country called Kenya, these Kenyans in the diaspora are speaking for them, which should not surprise anybody. These are Kenyans. They have families in Kenya. They have relatives in Kenya. They have people bothering them every day. Nitumie pesa. Tume shindwa. Tume kwama. These are the people. These people are in touch with exactly what is happening on the ground. It doesn't matter that they're thousands of kilometers away. Yeah. Indeed, I dare add, they are more in touch than many Kenyans who are within the borders of the country called Kenya. Okay? That is the irony of it all. In my opinion, this letter from Kenyans in the diaspora is the most accurate analysis anybody has been able to come up with with what the situation in Kenya is today. It beats even a Chris Kumekucha video analysis by far. I've never come anywhere near doing such an analysis. It is so pinpoint accurate and the precise situation on the ground. I strongly advise that you find that letter yeah, and read it then you'll understand a lot of things. You'll be able to see things clearly without the emotions. The grim reality of motherland Kenya today. Now, because we also help Kenyans on this channel to prepare for circumstances facing the nation, facing Kenyans, there is also something else I'd like to recommend. There is an article on the Kumekucha blog about first aid kwa mtu ambaye amepigwa risasi okay and i highly recommend for all kenyans who live within the borders of kenya to carefully read that article yeah, information from experts doctors people who deal with bullet wounds people who have done surgery on the same 
it is very important that you read it. Why? Because it could help save a life tomorrow. Because clearly we have entered as a country and with the government we have in Kenya today, that is going to be the order of the day going forward. Yeah, because people are very determined to protect their leadership at all costs. Yeah. The concerns of the Wananchi, what the Wananchi are going through, the suffering of the people is irrelevant. Top priority is to protect and sustain the leadership. So I highly recommend that you read that article. If you are in the diaspora, please forward it to your relatives in Kenya. You never know it could save the life of a relative tomorrow. Kwa sababu mali tuko, <laughs> si pazuri. It is very easy to find. Just head over to kumekucha.blogspot.com Indeed, the oldest blog in Kenya it was launched in 2005 when a few Kenyans were still asking, blog ni nini? <laughs> now, Ruto has told us Demonstrations in Kenya, Kwisha Maneno. There will be no more demonstrations. Rayleigh is telling us that from Wednesday, demonstrations now will be three times a week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Manta Mano, daily. In those three days. And so of course Kenyans wait with bated breath to see which will be more superior. The order, the directive of dictatorial Ruto, who says no mandamano, or our constitution, our 2010 constitution, that allows demonstrations. We wait with bated breath to see which side will win starting Wednesday next week. Mambo Sio Mazuri Kenya. That should be clear. Those of us who pray, please don't forget to pray for the motherland. As we enter this very tricky and dangerous phase of our history, deep in the judgment that the nation fully deserves for our sins of the past and present. And of course, the quick usual reminder yeah, of our new offer of 5 dollars for a whole year subscription to my weekly intelligence briefings or for the sets of videos on how to prosper in a dead economy. You can see details on your screens right now. Otherwise, I am here and will continue to bring analysis to you, especially at this very difficult time where it is easy to get confused, where it is easy to get it very wrong, where a lot of things are being hidden, kept from the public, where journalists are being beaten up, some of them being threatened. Your story our Toto Kukula Tiagas, Sitaki Kuyona Mali. Unataka kuandika your story? Jaribu. Wewe jaribu. Where's the evidence? Kuna evidence? Wewe? When that after story in Guinea. And this is happening when the United Nations Human Rights Commission has shown concern for human rights violations in the country called Kenya. Although those of us who have been on a very steep learning curve since Home am China, we know we cannot put a lot of weight on that. Yeah, but it's worth mentioning. And it is also true we are in a situation where a lot of the players who were around in the year 1990 and operating then are now back on stage. Okay, And some of them are in much more prominent positions than they were in the 1990s. And we have learned today that Damu Yabinadamu Eco high. Naina die. Okay? So that should explain to you a lot of the behavior 
we see. Those of you who are saying, Chris has lost it with these spiritual manenos, please try and learn something. Not from me, but from what you're seeing with your very own two eyes. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.